Church, we are introducing a new song to you guys. It's called, As You Find Me. And it's based off the verse, Romans 5, 8, which says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this song, I encourage you guys to, to just really hone into the lyrics. Don't take any lyric for granted because I wanna let you know this right now. Wherever you're at, God wants to meet you where you feel like you're lacking. God wants to feel, uh, meet you right where you feel like you're broken. He wants to meet you right here, right now, in this moment. So I encourage you guys to sing this out with us and make it personal to yourself.
don't deserve this kind of love Somehow This kind of love is who you are It's a grace I can never add up To be somebody you still want Somehow You love me as you find me Hey everyone, welcome to church today. My name's Travis. And I'm Ben. And we are so glad that you are tuning in to one of our awesome services here at CLC. We want to stay connected with you more than just one day a week. So Ben, what's the best way we can do that? The best way to do that is by filling out a Connect card. Uh, you can do that either in person at the Connect Center if you're here there. If not, you can do it online or on our uh, CLC app. Here at CLC, generosity is an important and vital part of our culture. And your giving allows us to impact those in our community, in Calgary, and all over the world. Thank you for your faithful, continuous generosity. To give today, you can download the CLC app, go onto our website, or if you're with us in person, head on out to the giving station. On Sunday, February 14th, that's right, Valentine's Day is coming up, guys, so make sure this is your note from us. We are excited to have the lead pastors of Hillsong Phoenix, Terry and Judith Chris, bringing the word. Whether you're online or in person, you're going to be hearing this awesome message that we believe is going to impact your life and the people around you. So, this is a great Sunday to invite your friends and family to join you for one of our awesome services. The best way to stay engaged throughout the week is by joining our CLC online Facebook group. You can learn more by going to our website or you can just join the group by searching up CLC online on Facebook and following the Instagram page. Also, you gotta make sure you mark February 21st on your calendars because we yes. have starting point. If you are new to Calgary Life Church or maybe you just have never gotten plugged into our community, this is the perfect opportunity to meet our pastors, yeah. meet the team, and learn more about where we've come from and where we're going as a community. You can register today on our website or the CLC app. Here's how you can turn on personalized notifications for the CLC app. First, open up your settings, then under notifications, select CLC and allow notifications. Open up your CLC app, press on the little hamburger button in the upper left corner, select settings, notifications, and now you can pick and choose which notifications you'd like to see. This is the best way to stay up to date with what's most relevant to you here at CLC. If you would like to connect with us after the service, you can join us by jumping into one of our Zoom lobbies. You can find the link on our website or in the chat. We hope to see you there. To stay up to date with what's going on here at CLC, make sure you follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube page for some consistent life-giving content, and check us out on Spotify for some awesome podcasts. And that's everything for Church News. Hey, welcome to today's message as we're talking about being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, let's begin by looking at this verse that's uh, found in uh, Ephesians chapter four. Paul writes this, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God. So this was this new creation is a product of God. And it says in true righteousness and holiness. Now, this verse on its own might be a little bit uh, mysterious and, you, you, know, you know, pose some questions to you. But I want to encourage you, if you didn't get to last week's message, we talked about spirit, soul and body. I'll give you a little bit of a recap, but it was so foundational. And this message builds on last week's message. It is important to understand how God created us. You know, what purpose our emotions play? How does God speak to us? You know, how do, you know are we a, just a sinner saved by grace? Or what about my sin nature? And you know, all of these questions, we settled that 
last week. And so I really want to encourage you to get into that, that teaching to understand the difference between spirit, soul, and body. And so just for a quick recap, uh, here's the diagram that we used last week, uh, the new creation. We talked about the spirit, the soul, the body. Now, the Bible says that before we came to Christ, we were, we were empty, we were in darkness, we were lacking life, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. And the spirit is the part of us that connects with the divine, connects with the spirit realm. And uh, the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we're a child of God. This is the place where God wants to talk to you. Now, our spirit, was dead in trespasses and sins. It was empty, it was in darkness, but the day that you received Christ, you became a new creation. Your body didn't become a new creation. Your soul didn't become a new creation. A miracle happened in your spirit. Jesus said, that which is born of spirit is spirit, and that which is born of flesh is flesh. When he had said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, well, how can a man be born again a second time? Does he enter his mother's womb again? How does that happen? And Jesus said, no, it's not a physical rebirth. Being born again is a spiritual rebirth. And what happens is the life of God came on the inside of you who were dead in trespasses and sins, he made alive. And the word of God says, of his fullness we've all received. And, and in him was life, and that life was the light of all men. So revelation and the lights come on. You become fused together with the life of God. You became a partaker of the divine nature, the Bible says. And if you've joined yourself to the Lord, you are one spirit. So in your inner man, the Bible calls this the inner man, or the, 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 the real you, you know, the deepest part of you, that's that you're fused together with the life of God. And according to the scriptures, that's where true righteousness happens and perfect holiness. You are complete in Christ. So that's the spirit. Now, in your soul is where you have your mind, your will, emotions, and you, and you process things. Here you get information from the outside world with your body, right? You know, you use your five senses and here you, you get information from the, the spirit realm and uh, your mind processes it, processes it. So here you get information, here you get revelation, here you get interpretation. You interpret it, you, you add a meaning to the facts that you feel or the impressions that you get. So this, is anyway, we're gonna talk about this. This is the new creation. Let's look at our next diagram. Our next diagram, this is the carnal man, because the scriptures, uh, as we talked about last week, speaks about being a, a natural man, someone who's not born again, a carnal man, someone who's born again, but he's kind of behaving like a spiritual baby. He's not maturing, you know, he's full of division and strife and anxiety. And then there's a spiritual person whose spirit and his soul is in harmony. Oh, I love that word, harmony. God wants you to be at peace with yourself and of course with him and it all happens according to what happens in your soul. So in, our, so in your spirit, when you got born again, you got the fullness of Christ, salvation, life of God, peace, fullness of faith, your inheritance, blessed, acceptance, holiness, righteousness, you are complete, you're born of God, sonship. And see, your spirit was that part of you that was saved. Now your soul is the part that's being saved. Here you have insecurities, inferiorities. We battle this all the time. Come on, it's the, the spiritual warfare happens up here. Well, I don't even call it spiritual warfare. It's really mental warfare. Inadequacies, feelings of anxieties, hurts, histories, like our past, things that have happened to us, fears, guilt, shame, lies. This is what's going on in our soul. And then in our body, we have our appetites. And so this part is being saved. When the scriptures say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's not talking about whether you're gonna make heaven or not. It's talking about this part of your life. Your spirit was saved, can't add anything to this. You are perfect and complete in Christ. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Your body will be saved. You're coming out of the grave one day with a glorified body. But your soul, this is what we're working on every day, everybody. Electricians, as I said last week, they have a little bit of formula. They say that uh, outflow equals inflow minus resistance. That determines your outflow. And so if there's a lot of resistance in here, then it's really hard to see this life. Jesus said, he that believeth on me out of his innermost belly will flow rivers of living water. God wants your life to be fresh, flowing, not stagnant and swampy, you know. He wants you to be filled with life and overflowing and pouring out to others. But this is the challenge here. So let's look at one more drawing real quick and we're gonna unpack this 
on how to renew, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So here is what happens when your soul gets renewed, when you renew your mind with the Word of God. You come into agreement, you start acknowledging, because this is your present spiritual reality. And here you start saying, yeah, if the Word of God says that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, well, then I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, here your revelation ruled, here your sense ruled, and here your reason ruled. And this is the revelation is the place of power. So somebody who gets a revelation on tithing, he doesn't question it. Some say, well, it's not reasonable to tithe. Well, it's not, you know, it's not logical, you know, to give God the first 10% of what you got, you know. To this person, it's an issue. The natural mind receives not the things of God, they're spiritually, they're spiritually discerned. Here, it's like, it's revelation, man. I just know in my knower. I just know in here, God has spoken to me. God doesn't, he doesn't witness with your intellect. He doesn't intellect with your bodies. Ooh, I know God was in that meeting because the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Well, could have been the air conditioner. You know, that's not the way you, you the Holy Spirit witnesses with your spirit. All right, so that is a brief summary of what we learned last week. So now let's, uh, let's go on to our next verse, which is Romans chapter six, verse six. Paul again writes this, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. What a great verse. Do you know that? Do you know that our old man was crucified with Christ? That the power, the body of sin, done away with? See, this goes back to our verse in Ephesians chapter four. Paul says, put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. Get rid of the old man. Now, somebody in Paul's day I'm sure drew the mental connection to one of the Roman execution methods that they used. So when a Roman army defeated, you know, an opposing army, often what they would do is they would, they would execute the general in an incredibly gruesome fashion. They would take the dead, a dead body of one of that general's, you know, army, and they would strap it to his back and they would fix it there. And they wouldn't allow him to be able to take it off. And, and so he'd be carrying this dead corpse. And what would happen is, as that body would begin to corrupt and decay, all the toxins and, and fluids from that, I mean, it's gross, man, from that body would just seep into that general. And even though he was alive, eventually all that toxins, those poisons would just, from all that decay and that death would just get into his vital organs and then the general himself would die. Now let's read the scripture with that picture in mind. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. Come on, some of you are carrying around the weight of your past, past failures, things that you did that you're embarrassed of, things that you wish you had never done before, things that you said or things that have happened to you and pains that have happened. Or maybe you're, you're carrying this old burden, this old idea of who you were and you just feel like you're so labeled and locked and limited into it. Here Paul says, put off that old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Man, you keep carrying around your past and all that stuff, it's gonna attack your vital organs. It's gonna attack your heart, your lungs, your, your mind, you know. And it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, all right. Have you put on the new man? Are you still thinking like the old man? Are you still behaving like the old man? Paul says, hey, that old man was crucified with Christ. It's dead. If you continue to live in your past failures, in your past mistakes, then you are gonna start to see corruption. It's gonna influence your decision-making, your reasoning, your thinking. And Paul says, get renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, the word spirit can mean an attitude or an atmosphere, right? It, it can also mean a spirit, but I don't, there's no spirit of your mind in the sense of a part of your, your makeup. It's all in your whole framework, your whole understanding, your whole conscious way of thinking. It needs a brand new spirit. Come on, you gotta sweep out the old dust bunnies and let God's spirit just bring in new thoughts, true thoughts about who you really are. Because when you get renewed in the spirit of your mind, that's how you're putting on the new man, which is, uh, was created according to God. It's of God, your divine nature, my friend. And it's in true righteousness and holiness. All right, so with that being said, uh, let me just give you some, some uh, uh, challenge here. Make up your mind, <laughs> make up, take control of your thing. Because the Bible speaks about having two different minds. And uh, you know, for example, in James chapter one, verse six to eight, uh, James writes, 
but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Man, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So this verse says, you can be a person of two minds, right? Uh, you know, a, a double-minded man, he's unstable in all of his ways. James says, you're not gonna receive anything, man. You need to quit being driven and tossed about. You need to make up your mind. Don't be double-minded, be single-minded. Well, we learned, you know, last week when we started talking about this, about, you know, this in Romans, it talks about in chapter eight, two different kinds of minds. And it says in Romans, to be carnally minded leads to death. In other words, to continue to live with an unrenewed mind, carrying around that old past, your old failures, the old bitterness, come on, the unforgiveness. You know, someone said unforgiveness is the poison that we drink, hoping it's gonna kill the person that harmed us. You know, to be carnally minded leads to death, but spiritually minded leads to life and peace. All right, so which mind? Make up your mind. Which mind are you going to hold on to? So a spiritual mind, and we read this last week, is somebody who has the mind of Christ a spiritual man. Now, what is the mind of Christ? It is the spiritual reality of what you possess in your spirit. Look at this verse. It says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? So a lot of people think, well, you know, the ways of God are mysterious, past finding out, and who can know what the Lord's gonna do? You can know, because he's given us his Bible, his word. And in here, he reveals his nature, he reveals his plan for you. He reveals what he thinks about you. He reveals everything. So much is here in the general revelation of who God is. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. It's on the inside of you. And so uh, let's uh, unpack this a little bit here and let's go to this next scripture. Look at this scripture in Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures start saying, okay, man, you know what? You should have the same mind that was in Christ. You should start thinking God's thoughts, his thoughts towards you. Uh, here's another uh, great scripture in Proverbs 23, verse seven. I'm sure you've heard this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, I mean, that's just a powerful, your thinking really is pivotal in getting free from the old you and, and being transformed in this new creation that God has made you to be. Remember, we wanna get our soul in line with the spiritual reality. When you do that, you experience harmony, fullness of life and peace, you know, so don't be double-minded, you know. It's like if you sin, you know, and you say, oh, I'm such a sinner. No, 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 no. Listen, you're not a sinner. You, you are a saint. You're a child of God. You know, and Paul, you know, that, that's, yeah, it, 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 you sinned and we do sin. I'm not saying that we don't, but that's not my real identity. That's when I forget who I am. That's when I forget that, you know, Christ has set me free, that, you know, where sin abounds, grace does much more abounds. And, you know, it's by the grace of God has come into my life to deny, you know, to teach me to deny ungodliness. So grace frees me from sin. It helps me to live free from sin. And so when I do sin, it's because I'm forgetting who I really am and you're forgetting who you really are when you behave you know, below you know, the level of expectation that you have. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on. And uh, our next verse, this is that key verse that I, that I talked about last week. These are the two, this verse is the hinge where the whole New Testament or this new creation lifestyle hinges on. If you get this, that door swings wide open into God's abundance his freedom, his prosperity, his healing, his goodness, his favor, it's all yours. Romans 12 2, don't be conformed. Don't let the world con you. Don't let the world, the world form you with their lies to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, without a renewed mind, you, you can't even know what the will of God is. You know, uh, that's a powerful thought. You know, you need to, Amos, uh, I think it's chapter three, verse three says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Okay, uh, look at this, uh, this verse here. As we talk about the, uh, uh, the spiritual man, there's a great scripture that we find in, in 1 Corinthians chapter two, verse nine, 10, and verse 12. But as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered to the heart of man 
the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Okay, there are some things that you've never thought about. There's some things that you haven't seen. There's some things that God has for you that you've never heard. Man, there are some things that are so out there that God has been planning and a scheming to fix you. He's gonna, he's gonna get you good, right? And, uh, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Notice it didn't say, you know, that, that this came through the process of your soul, through your understanding. You didn't think your way to connection with God. You're not that smart, right? But here it says, your, so in other words, in your spirit, you have a capacity to hear and see and dream beyond your mental capacity. Man, I love what Kenneth Hagin said. He said that the mind is the bottleneck of the spirit. Think about it. The very fullness of Jesus lives in your spirit. The plans, the purposes of God are in your spirit. The faith that overcomes the world, it's in your spirit. That is amazing. You, your spiritual capacity is unlimited, you know, outside of your faith with God. And so what, the, what God has prepared for, for those who love Him, it's revealed to us by His Spirit. And the, for the Spirit searches all things. Now, and it goes on to say, yes, the deep things of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who's from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So notice this. The Holy Spirit comes to reveal to you the things, all things, that have been freely given to you by God. What things have been given to you by God? Well, what's the new creation reality? It's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy, it's confidence, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Man, it's your inheritance, it's plans and purposes, it's anointings, come on, it's unlimited, it's in you. And so the Spirit comes, and notice the Holy Spirit doesn't witness with your intellect. It's not like you have to have a certain level of IQ before God will speak to you. You're just down on the inside right here. That's why some of the great displays of faith I've seen from people that have been uneducated and untrained. And isn't that what they said about the apostles? When they, when, when they perceived, they said these, these when they, they noticed that these guys uh, were untrained and uneducated and it said they marveled because they perceived they had been, uh, been with Jesus when they saw the boldness of, of Peter and John. So that scripture says they understood, man, they got something. Didn't come from one of our schools. They're walking in an authority. They're walking in a dimension of power. They're unskilled. They're untrained. They're uneducated because it's not of the soul. This is an important part right here. This is where a lot of people miss faith. They think faith is a product of your soul, of your intellect, of your will, thinking the right thoughts, making the right confession. You know, if you do that, then that's faith. Well, faith, you know, the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves, not of ourselves, not of our souls. Faith and grace are not a product of your human soul. You can't produce it. It's divine. It comes from God, lives in your spirit. And we, it gets released as we abide in Christ. It's His faith that flows through us. So, all right. And it says uh, that we might freely know the things, the things that have been freely given to us by God. Are you aware God's not holding anything out on you today? Wow! He's not holding anything back on your marriage, your kids, your prosperity, come on, your health. He's given to you them all freely. It's free, but it's not cheap. Through the finished work of Jesus, through His shed blood, everything was provided for you and He wants you to have it. And the Spirit comes to remind you, to reveal to you, to illuminate your understanding so you might know what those things are. All right, so we got a few minutes left here. Let's go through some practical steps on how to renew your mind, how to draw from your spirit and bring it into your everyday living. So eight simple steps. These are gonna go through these quick. I hope you're taking notes, writing it down. You know, I'm reminded of a story when I lived with Peter Younger a number of years ago. I was doing my laundry and I found his Bible uh, just uh, you know, on a table. And in the back of his Bible, he had all these notes, all these messages and notes. And so while I was doing my laundry, I just grabbed my, my piece of paper and a pen and I started to write down all of these great sermons. And he walked in and said, what are you doing? And I said, these are great sermons, Peter. And he just grabbed the Bible, out of his, his own Bible out of my hand and said, Anthony, I was on my face. I got my nose in that book studying to get those messages. He said, you need to do the same. Get your own messages. And I, I, it kind of shocked me, but you know what? I, I think sometimes, you know, we make things so easy for people and we don't challenge people enough. Get into the Word of God. Dig a little bit deeper, right? Because, you know, the only sparkling gold you find on the, on the surface is fool's gold. You got to dig down for the real. All right. So number one, first step, 
stop waiting for an outside miracle to change your mind, right? Some people, they think, you know, uh, well, um, my life, the, you know, my life is so hard, you know, uh, in, as long as you believe the excuse that the reason why my mind is so negative is because my life has been so hard and one day God will just have to download something and you know and I've heard Christians talk about oh I just God is gonna have to download it into my mind and uh, you know and sometimes that's just laziness sometimes you've got to take ownership of your thoughts you know the Bible says take no thought you know or take thought or take care something that you've got to do but you can't just you know, put this all on God. One day God's gonna work a miracle and change my thinking. Now, you're responsible for your thinking. All right, so that's the first one. Stop waiting for an outside miracle to change your mind. Number two, stop believing that you can't control your thoughts. Oh, Pastor, I just, my mind is running a, a million miles away. Well, what does the scripture say? Well, look what it says in uh, Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. Oh, that's powerful right there. Meditate on these things. That's, that's you set your mind on these things. The Bible would never ask you to do something that you weren't able to do. That wouldn't be fair of God. So what God is saying, yes, you can control your thinking. And he says, put your mind on that. All right, let's look at the next one here. Number three, what you feed your mind, uh, what you feed your mind with becomes a mindset. What, what are you setting, what you're setting your mind on? And that's gonna become your framework. That's gonna become your mindset. We talked about this last week, set, like glue, concrete, sets. You know, you, you, you're fixing something. What are you setting your mind on? All right, um, confess what you believe, not, not, not what you feel. Now this is important, you know, uh, because uh, first of all, when we think about your, your mind, uh, experts tell us, researchers tell us, that you think on average 50,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thoughts. A lot, most of it is from your subconscious. And you're not even aware of some of those thoughts that, that are going on uh, around, you know, inside you. And what they discovered was that for the average person, 80% of those thoughts, so 40,000 thoughts, are negative or self-defeating or self-deprecating. Isn't that amazing? How, how negative we often think about ourselves? And here it says, confess what you believe, not what you feel. Because we live by faith and not by sight and not by feelings. If you're trying to live your Christian life through your feelings, one day you feel saved, next day you feel lost. One day you feel righteous, next day you feel guilty. You know, one day you feel happy, next day you feel, we don't, we don't live this, you know, by our feelings. But we need to get our feelings to follow what we're believing because that's really what happens. And the word confess there is so important because the, this, try this, you know, you can't be thinking about one thing and, then, and confess something else. When you confess something, you speak that word out of your mouth, your mind will automatically begin to follow. And so one of the best ways to control your thinking is through speaking. You know what, this is where I love confessing the Word of God. And we've done this and I've taught about this and I'm sure we've got resources available for you, but when it, you start confessing God's Word, all of a sudden your mind begins to follow. And so I wanna encourage you to make that a habit. And look at this scripture. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, faith is a spirit. Faith is not a product of your intellect, your reason, your, your will or your emotions. But since we have the same spirit of faith, Think about how powerful that is for a moment. God, who is a spirit, spoke into nothing and nothing became creation. Tells me that the spiritual dimension has far greater capacity and authority than the natural. And uh, says, and, and we have the same, we have the same, the same, wow. The same spirit of faith that was in Jesus and Paul and Peter, the early church. We've got that same spirit of faith according to as what is written. Mm. Can I just say something? Faith is always according to what is written. Do you know what this book is written? Do you know what your inheritance is? You know, I've seen people when a rich relative dies, they can't wait to go to the reading of the will. If they only knew that this book is the reading of the will, 
to see what our elder brother Jesus left us. He left us everything. And the good news is he's the executor of the will. He's risen from the dead to guarantee that no earthly lawyer is, or no, uh, instead of the lawyer, I guess it would be no unbelieving scholar, uh, you, know, uh, you know, scholar or supposed scholar, you know, or theologian can rob us out of what God's given to you and I today. According to what is written, look at this, I believed and therefore I spoke. And we also believe, and therefore we speak. You know, I, I, I like this. The spirit of faith means it's a settled issue. It says, I, I believed, I settled it, it's done. I've looked at my circumstances, remember? Information comes in through your body, but revelation comes from your spirit. So when the enemy comes to you and says, man, you're gonna die of this disease, you know, and your body has got all these symptoms and you're feeling it, you know what, you need, a, you need to get into the Word of God to find out what God's Word promises you, that there is, you know, an abundance through the finished work of Jesus that's yours. And so, you know, you have to decide, you know, I, 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 it's a settled issue that uh, uh, is finished work, it's mine, my God will never leave me nor forsake me, therefore I can boldly say the Lord is my helper, of what shall I be afraid? You know, so let things become settled in your heart. Sometimes you're speaking into faith, you know, you're taking the Word of God, you're preaching to yourself because you know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're speaking to yourself and that's good too. But you, what's really where the power is released is when you're speaking from faith, when it's a settled issue in your life. And we also believe and therefore speak. All right, we're going to move on. A few more points here. And uh, number five, resist the negative thoughts and assist positive thoughts. And uh, again, you know, one of the things that is really helpful for me in, in my journey of, you know, you know, walking in the mind of Christ and walking in His fullness is I follow my emotions. In other words, when I get a, if I'm in conversation with somebody and all of a sudden I start feeling like I'm inferior or that person maybe have said something or the way they said it, the tone makes me feel inadequate. You know what, I take those feelings and, I, and all those feelings are connected to a belief. All of your thoughts, all your feelings are connected to a thought. And so if you want to know what you're thinking, follow, follow that emotion. So I, I feel that negativity, I think, well, hang on a sec here, I feel inferior. You know, well, uh, you know, and, and then you get, okay, but what does the scripture say? Am I inferior? No, I'm, I'm the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. You know, I'm created for good works. I'm a child of God and there's nothing inferior about me. You know, no, that's not true, that's not right. And then, so I just begin to speak out and uh, I acknowledge those thoughts that the Bible says, take every thought captive. Well, look at the scripture right here. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty in God. God's given you some pretty strong weapons for pulling down strongholds because these mindsets can become strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that comes against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of what God's made you to be according to true righteousness and holiness, a new creation, you have gotta wage warfare against those lies about your past. And it says, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ, every thought. This is your discipline, this is your spiritual warfare. Your spiritual warfare happens in your thought life. Right between these two ears is where the battle rages. All right, number six, Remember the universal law. Okay, you got that one, let's move on. <laughs> What's the universal law? This is the universal law. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, especially for Calgary, we have winter and summer, there's no in-betweens, and day and night shall not cease. What shall not cease? Seed, time and harvest. So the seeds that you sow will be the harvest that you reap. This is a universal law. The measure of thought and study you give the word is the measure of virtue and life that comes back to you. We studied that the other week. All right, and he said the kingdom of God is like a man, uh, uh, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. This is how the kingdom works. All right, two more points real quick. Number seven, have a miracle mindset. Believe that, you know, miracles are for you that the nature of God is miracles, that you can experience a miracle of freedom from your past, that you can fly higher than you've ever flown before. Listen, Isaac sowed seed in times of famine and he reaped a hundredfold even in that year and he went on to become exceedingly prosperous, the Bible says. I believe that even in COVID, you can get a job. Come on, in this economic downturn, I believe that you can experience freedom and fullness and abundance. I believe that in this season, your marriage can get better. I believe that your kids can come off drugs. I believe that God can work a miracle in your mind right now, that your best days are still ahead. You know what, I refuse to be contained into the thinking of the 
natural box. See, the, natu- the humanist says, well, there's only mind and matter. The psychologist says, well, there's soul and body. But we are a new creation. We recognize that we live in a different, div- a different dimension because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And faith is not for the possible, it's for the impossible. All right, my last point with this we're going to end up is act on it. The best way, start acting on God's Word. Take God at His Word and act on it. And uh, these are eight simple steps on how to be renewed in the spirit of the mind so you can put off the old man, put off that past that's growing corrupt, that's trying to rob you of your health and vitality. And God wants you to put on that new man today, created according to God. Come on, you're a miracle looking for a place to happen. You're a new creation. You're not what everybody else says you are. You are who God says you are. And so today, I just want to encourage you, get into this book, get into the mirror of God's Word, discover who you are, and live life. You know, there's a verse, not in your notes, it's my favorite verse and found in Philemon. And it says that the communication of your faith would become effective or active or energized by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you by Christ Jesus. Why don't you open up this book and start to study and find out what every good thing that is in you by Christ Jesus is. And as you start affirming it, acknowledging it, watch your faith go to a whole new level. Come on, CLC, we're family. We're doing this together. I'll see you next week. If you made the decision today to follow Jesus, we wanna celebrate with you. So the next thing that we want you to do is jump onto the CLC website or CLC app and fill out a connect card. You'll see a little box on there that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. Check that off and one of us will reach out to you and help walk you through these next steps. We'd also like to send you one of these red bags right here. It's just got a couple different resources to help you out as you begin this walk with God, including a New Testament Bible, a little book called Why Jesus, and some teachings from Pastor Anthony. So make sure you do that. And again, we're so happy for you.